Hey there YouTube, it's Sebastian from SDC Canada. Thank you for clicking on this video. Today we're going to take a look at Excel 2013 and we're going to look at some of the basic features that are available on this program. We're also going to quickly enter some data, we're going to edit some data, and we're also going to use this really cool feature called the Auto Sum button. From there we'll be able to do some very basic calculations. What I have here now is an a, a open spreadsheet. It's it's blank. It's a new one. It's a new workbook. And what you'll notice is at the very top, like all other Microsoft applications or Office applications, that is, you're going to have what's called a ribbon. And on this ribbon, there's going to be a whole bunch of different buttons that as we go through the different training modules that I'm going to set up, we'll go through some of the the actual tools on here together and understand what they do. So that's your ribbon. From there, we also have a, uh, a menu bar here. And these are actual different tabs. In the older versions of the software, they used to call them a menu bar. But what these are, they're actual tabs that allow you to cycle through the different options that are on the ribbons. Now, one thing you'll notice that um, as we go through the different training modules, you're going to notice that a lot of the features that you find, the different options that you find can be done in many different ways. And I'll do my best to try and show you the different ways that you can do each uh, specific thing. What we have here is a name box. We'll learn what that's about later on when we actually start naming ranges. Here we've got a formula bar. And if you notice, you'll see that the word or the words formula bar comes up. That's because that's a screen tip. The, the longer you hold your mouse on something, the more likely the software is going to actually give you the definition of what you're pointing at. So that's our formula bar, very, very powerful. Allows us to write formulas, allows us to put in data, information, stuff like that. We've got ourselves a whole bunch of letters here, ABCs, uh, one, two, threes, and what they represent are columns, and these are rows and where they intersect you get yourself a cell now it's actually in these cells that we want to enter information and data and when we enter information and data we can actually manipulate it change formatting colors we can actually change the size of the cell make them bigger make them wider we can do all kinds of really cool stuff and we will go through that eventually in between the columns and the rows you've got this button here that for years and years and years was nothing. It was just blank. No one really knew it existed. I uh, refer to it in my lectures as a middle child button because what it actually does is it actually, if you click on it, will select the entire workbook or in this case the worksheet. So we'll get to that as well. Not a big deal right now, but I wanted to point it out because I am actually a middle child in my family, so I like to make little nicknames for it the true uh, ability or the true use for that is to select all. To deselect all, just click any cell you want. You'll notice that there are a lot of letters, like I said, they're, they're columns and they can keep going uh, to the right for some time. And then you've got rows and depending on your data, that could be, you know, 30, 40, 50, could even be a thousand different rows. It all depends on what the data it is that you're working on. At the very bottom, you've got what we classify as a sheet. In the older software, you would get by default three sheets, but for whatever reason, when they introduced 2013, they reduced that default to one. We'll learn later on that you can change the color of the sheets, you can change the names of the sheets, you can do all sorts of different things. If you wanted more sheets, then you would actually just click on that little plus symbol. We're not going to go through that today because this is lesson one and we want to keep this extremely basic. On the right hand side of the screen, you will see that there is this thing that's uh, saying 100%. That is actually your zoom level. I like to, when I do my lectures, I like to zoom in. So you can either slide that bar across to zoom in, or if you uh, have access to your keyboard, you hold control and you can roll the little, uh, the mouse uh, rolly thing. I don't even know what they call it. The wheel, the mouse wheel, you can roll that up and down and you can zoom in and out. So I'm going to zoom in to close to about 190% just so when we actually start putting information in these cells that you can actually see what we're doing. 
as mentioned on your ribbon you are going to have a whole bunch of different options we're not going to go through those all today but what I do want to do is actually enter some information into uh, the cell so as I said this is a new worksheet in future lectures and training modules I will actually put in the YouTube um, description I'll put a link to a start file in which you can download before you watch this uh, training session and you can follow along that way but today's nothing's there it's basic starting from scratch if this is your first time ever using Excel this is what you're gonna see might as well build something that makes sense to you one of the lectures that I like to talk about in is usually about food because everybody relates to food everybody gets hungry so what I like to do is I like to create a spreadsheet with my classes first spreadsheet is going to be you know we eat every day Monday to Sunday we eat breakfast lunch dinner I don't know snacks whatever you may think of and I like to tell my students that we're gonna build a spreadsheet that's gonna help us calculate what we spend on a week-to-week -week basis well, that's what we'll do here it's very simple straightforward right here in the first cell this is cell a1 as you can tell it's in the first column which is a and the first row which is one and as I mentioned where they intersect that is actually a cell in the name box it also says a1 a lot of people get excited they see a1 they think steak sauce not happening here this is software we're working we're trying to uh, to make some calculations here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give ourselves a title in a1 to our our new spreadsheet and for example we're gonna say uh, the amount of money I spend oops spend a week on food put exclamation mark whatever you want that's okay I'm gonna press enter by pressing enter it's going to take me down to a2 I usually like to leave a gap between my titles and my data so I'm gonna press enter one more time it's gonna take me down to a3 as you can see I've got a title here the amount of money I spend a week on food that's cool it works you'll probably uh, notice that it is larger than the cell that we have and some people like to panic uh, don't panic you can actually change the width of your cells and we can look at that later on but let's try and get our data in here so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say uh, meal so in a3 we're gonna say meal and from there we're gonna say breakfast snack lunch and dinner now these are very very basic we don't want to get too involved but as you can see it's breaking it out for us and that's the whole thing about Excel you're gonna get uh, situations where you're gonna have multiple sets of data and you want to figure out the best way to organize it and in this case we can break down our meals in column A and then B C D E and so on and so forth can maybe be the days of the week I always have the debate with the students I say hey what's the first day of the week some people say Sunday some people say Monday it really doesn't make a difference but for sake of argument today we will say it is a Sunday actually so we're gonna say Sunday is the first day of the week what a lot of people don't realize is that Excel has some built-in abilities that are not in plain sight so for example you're writing this out or you're typing this out and you want to put Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday you want to do all the days so you're gonna sit here and you're gonna go over click C3 type in Monday and you go D3 Tuesday and you're gonna continue typing that along unfortunately that is slow it's time-consuming there's risk of error and there's a better way instead of doing what I had just said to you what we can do is we can go back click on the Sunday which is cell B3 and what you'll notice is in the bottom right corner of the cell itself there's this little square and that little square if you're not careful can do some incredible things it can stress you out it can select different cells it can actually continue a sequence so for example today's Sunday the system knows that by default the next day should be Monday it will take a guess on what the next cell should be if you were to drag it that way so for example let's take a look we got B3 selected we go down to the bottom right corner of the cell and we see what looks like a plus sign 
I joke around with my students. I say this is the evil plus sign because it's different than this one here. This is a cell pointer. It looks friendly. It's cute. It's cuddly. This one looks angry. It's just the way it is. If you go over here, slight movement to the left or above, you're going to see you got four pointing arrows. And this one looks confused. What this would actually do is actually move the word Sunday to a different cell. So this is why I always tell my students to be very careful. Make sure you have complete control of your mouse because in a fraction of a movement, something different could happen. So be careful. We want this angry plus sign. We want to say, hey, Excel, we're dragging to the right. We want the extra days of the week or the, the next days of the week to show up. So let's click on it. We're going to hold it, left click, and drag. And don't be shy. We go all the way across to Saturday and we let go. And now what happens is Excel says, okay, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Perfect. It's good to go. You'll notice that Wednesday's a bit cut off. Again, the cell width is not wide enough. We'll fix that later on. Let's go to breakfast. Let's say for us, we eat the same breakfast every day and our breakfast costs us $2. So we can put in the number two for breakfast. Perfect. Now, if every day is going to cost $2, then we simply go back to B4, where we entered the two, and we go back to that angry plus sign, and we drag it all the way across. And what you'll notice is that every day is going to get the number two. And that's fine. That's the way the system works. Our snacks, we're going to say on Sunday, our snack is going to cost us $1. On Monday, it's going to cost us a dollar 25 as you can see there's an increment of 25 cents in order for us to tell Excel to continue that increment of 25 cents to Saturday we need to highlight both $1 and 125 in order to do that you simply left click on B5 and move across to C5 Notice that I stayed in the middle when I left clicked because I do not want to risk going anywhere else and creating a problem. Very important, make sure, stay in the middle, left click, drag across. At that point, you let go of your mouse. You, you can raise your hands in the air and say, yep, look, no hands, everything's cool. Everything should be fine from there. Like a lot of students, what they do is they'll select the two cells and then they're still holding and then they try to go down to the bottom. It doesn't work that way. Middle of the cell, drag across, let go of the button, bottom right corner, angry plus sign all the way across. Now you'll notice that Excel has taken the sequence from the Sunday Monday and continued it on through the week by 25 cent increments. Very, very important. In order to continue a sequence, two cells must be selected. For lunch, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to say on Sunday, we spent uh, $9 on our lunch. Monday was $8. Dinner, we're going to say on Sunday, we spent $5. And dinner on Monday, we spent $7. What we have here are uh, numbers that, for the lunches uh, instance, it's going to be declining by a dollar each day. By the time we get to Saturday, it should be pretty close to uh, a couple dollars. Dinner is going up. It's going the opposite direction. What a lot of students do is they get comfortable with selecting two cells, dragging across. No problem. But what I like to do is encourage them not to be afraid to try multiple cells. So, for example, instead of doing each one or each row by itself, we're going to select all four of these numbers and then go to the angry plus sign or the, uh, what they call autofill handle, actually, I should give you the proper name, autofill handle, and we will drag it across. You'll notice that we can actually do both rows at the same time. This takes a lot of practice, and I encourage you to uh, try different things, give, uh, give a couple tries on different words that you can do. I always suggest, you know, for example, quarter one, you can actually type in quarter one, and it will know to take you to four quarters, kind of cool. Also, try, for example, months. So, Nov for November, if you drag it across, it's going to take it into Je uh, December, January, and it'll continue going as, as far as you drag it. So, I hope this was valuable to you. There's going to be a lot more sessions coming up. 
just wanted to get this one out there it's an intro and if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comment section and uh, and I will do my best to get the answers to you if there's anything that you would like to see uh, also put them in the comments and I will do those for you as well hope you had a good time and uh, look forward to uh, hearing your comments or seeing your comments have a great night